trip behind the scenes with future country rock blues kings and queens discover them first with palm mash tv palm mash tv Everybody, it's Paul Mash TV time again. Thank you so much for joining us on another episode. We've got a great interview coming up for you momentarily. But if you haven't already, click that subscribe button and the bell below you there. And anytime a new episode uh, comes your way, you'll be notified. And feel free to leave a comment on the comment section. We'd love to hear from you there. And if you're on Facebook, go to facebook.com forward slash Paul Mash TV. And this is our official page, and you can follow us there, inbox us, comment the things you want to, that you like and see there. And uh, also you can email us as well, paulmashtv, all one word, at gmail.com. And uh, if you're a fan, you can write to us and tell us what you think of the show. Or if you're a band or a solo artist uh, that want to be on the show, we'll tell you how to do that. And all this stuff we just told you is going to be uh, recapped at the closing cre credits at the end of the show, so stay tuned for that. From Wynn, Alabama, we have Jamoris Cunningham today. Very awesome artist, and I think you're going to agree there. And uh, we're going to get to that interview, which starts right now. Okay, here we are, as promised, with the interview. And with us from Wynn, Alabama, we have Jamoris Cunningham with us today. Thanks for joining us, Jamoris. Oh, man, you're welcome, man. I, I, I'm um, really thankful for having been on your show, Mr. Paul Mesh. Oh, well, thank you very much. You made my day, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, well, let, let's start uh, on your story about how you started to be an artist, because as you know, everyone has their own story. We'd love to hear your story. Woo! Let's go back. Back to the future. Let's <laughs> take it way back. You feel me? Yeah. Uh, well, it, I'm going to be honest with you. Kind of like JL, kind of what JL saying. It's kind of grew up my family, you know. My family, they, they talented. You know, they real, like, singers and stuff and then my family they gospel group singing so every sunday morning we used to have two big old bands and every sunday morning we didn't miss church because my auntie and my grandmothers and my uncles we all load up and go sing different places and they you know and the name of that gospel group is mary and the pew singers mm -hmm. you can look them up on youtube they they all all digital platforms they pretty good but back to what i'm saying is and and that's on my dad's side, like for us, like music wise. Um, when they used to go travel everywhere, and I was a little boy when you sang in the choir, clap 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 clap. And shoot, man, I, it just grew up me right there. Because if like if my dad on my daddy's side of the family, if you don't play instruments, you sing. If you don't sing, you play instruments. Mm -hmm. So everybody in the family, from a little boy, from I'm talking about, I've seen three or four or five years old. They uh, they play instruments already, like drums and stuff. That's where they start off at. So on my mom's side, she used to love Southern Soul. Mm -hmm. That's on both sides, really. Now, I don't want to lose you on my dad's side. Remember, I told you on my dad's side we did music, music. <laughs> I'm talking about performing at different festivals and stuff, mm -hmm. and uh. That's, I think that's where I got my singing talent from. <laughs> I know for sure. <laughs> okay. Because my daddy used to be a bad singer, you know. And uh, a professional gospel group wanted him one time. But back in the old days, you know, those mothers and grandmothers wouldn't let you go nowhere because they were scared of the safety on the road, you know. So my dad didn't get a chance to go nowhere. So fast forward to my mom's side. She used to love the uh, Southern Soul Blues. Rest in peace her soul. She died back in 2014, 53 years old. Mm -hmm. Cancer. Got her. So uh, when I was a little boy and I was coming up, my mom used to always listen to Southern Soul music. So that kind of got stuck in my blood. Mm -hmm. I was one of those boys when they had parties. Mm -hmm. And I be, they told me to go to the room, but I was a little boy. They call out the room and be like, hey, Jamar, can you come out here and do this part right here? <laughs> That's where I really started. I was entertaining right there, right? So I kind of grew up in Southern Soul just by listening to it every weekend because my mom, she loved Southern Soul, Southern Soul, Southern Soul. Mm -hmm. And one night, it's back in 2018, you know, past all that, and, you know, she passed and everything. 
2018, I had a friend named Elwood Chapman, a.k.a. called Chaps. Mm -hmm. He's like an underground producer. And back in 2018 was when he we were sitting in a single ride trailer. I'm talking about around a round table, a kitchen round table, right? There's 20 people in the background. And I'm going to tell you how fabulous this producer was. We sitting in the background. There's about 20 people in the background. We recorded my first single called Too Late for Candy, which I didn't get to see yet. Mm. And um, it's getting ready to be 2019 on New Year's Eve. We started recording, and we finished recording on two, um New Year's Day, we finished that track up, and that's how I got Southern Soul off a song called Too Late for Candy. And and on that song, me and my dad was on that. I came on first on the first verse, my dad featuring my dad. And that song kind of took off, and then I started meeting different artists in Southern Soul. I'm talking about it. I've been everywhere, and um, I got an award for Texas Music Award, the upcoming artist. Uh, I met the best of the best on the stage and opened up for them. So that's pretty much it. Hmm. Well, that's quite a story there. And uh, congratulations on your award, by the way. Oh, uh, yeah. Appreciate it. And just a couple of minutes ago, he mentioned uh, JL. As you remember, he was on our last episode. And matter of fact, yeah, I, we were gonna, I met him. Yeah, we were going to do it all three together, but he had a last minute uh, uh, thing that came up. So Jamoris couldn't make it yesterday, but at least we got him now. So, um, well, I met I met JL back in 2020, I think, because I seen him on Facebook and I seen him in his studio like he usually do. And he was energized and he was motivating. And I was like, man. And he I, I think he reached out to me, you know, and uh I was doing my thing before I met him. And I just liked the energy he had. So we went through a bad, you know, couple of groups, you know what I'm saying? And got disappointed, but we just started coming back together. And I got with Willie Fluky Stokes, Willie Wonka. Mm -hmm. And he made me the vice president of B Pockets Entertainment. So I was proud of that. And me and JL, and I brought him in and me and him doing our thing now, you know. And JL, he's part of D Pockets Entertainment now. And also, the legendary T Bird, the one singing this song, they're just my baby daddy. Yeah, that's my brother. Yeah. I don't want to leave nobody out. We're planning on having uh, T Bird on the show very soon. I don't know when yet, but uh, hopefully soon we'll get T Bird on the show. And, and comedian Roman Rome, he's a good host too. Yeah, and we want to thank uh, another one he just mentioned, uh, Fluky Stokes. I want to thank him. Yeah, for his pockets in the table, baby. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's the one that got uh, him uh, lined up for this interview as well as JL. So I want to thank him for that. Uh, yes, he. He did good. He 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 got me to meet you. See. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. Well, tell us a little bit about some of the artists you grew up with. You probably already mentioned a couple of them, but mention some of the ones that you grew up with that inspired you to be the artist you are today. Well, the one I listened to inspired me to be. But they all were well, the ones. The couple of them deceased, and that's just why when I do shows, I do a tribute to them, mm -hmm. um, like Tyrone Davis. You ever heard of him? Mm -hmm. Tyrone Davis. You familiar with him? Uh, and that's about you know Tyrone Davis, and that's about it. Oh, okay. And John well, Taylor, Al Green, I love all those singers, man, because they bring the soul to your heart. If you listen to the music, it brings spirit. And your music is very powerful. Mm -hmm. If you're feeling down, and you turn on some Al Green, you're gonna lift you up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's true, and. um um, I hope you will be doing this for quite a while now because I know you've been around for a while. Maybe you'll be around a lot more, and uh, we would we would be happy that uh, you did that. You know, uh, right. And I'm I'm sure you all your stuff is on the streaming formats and uh, yeah. all, um, uh, on social media. Maybe you can tell us everywhere we can find you on both streaming and. Well, both of the stuff like like L U M Loom. You ever heard of Loom? Mm -hmm. I'm on that YouTube. Instagram, uh, TikTok, mm -hmm. and, you know, I don't too much food, too many other crap, you know what I'm saying? Because they really don't do what I wanted to do, so. Mm. Well, you'll just have to go out there, ladies and gentlemen, and check out his stuff on YouTube and some of the other things he mentioned, like Instagram, follow him there. I know he would love <laughs> you for that. 
YouTube, and, go ahead and subscribe, please. Yeah. <laughs> I love blues, but my bed love rock and roll, baby. Come on now. Okay, and uh, why don't you tell us the title of this video we're about to watch and if there's a story behind it. I'm sure everyone would love to hear the story. Oh, uh, really? The story behind that song, it's really not a story. It's just a, I was in the studio, and I love, I know people love catchy hooks. You know, a lot of, a lot of music is catchy, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I might sing about a lot of pop and then just have a catchy music, you know what I'm saying? But I created that music because you think about it. Everybody love blues, right? Mm -hmm. Some people love blues, not everybody. My bad. Some people love blues. And I thought about the general music when I made that song. I said, hmm, I love blues. And then I was like, I ain't nasty that when I'm going to say this. <laughs> but mm. I thought about the bed. You know, and I know I know people when they get, you know, such and such in their grown folks business, you know what I'm talking about. We all grown on this interview. Well, my bed loves rock and roll. I used to bed for like another general music, you know, rock and roll. Mm -hmm. So that was catchy. See, oh. I'm a catchy. I love I love catchy music. Mm. And I love to tell a story in my music. Oh. And that's what hits come from. Okay. Um, and what's the title of the song again? I love blues, but my bed loves rock and roll. I love blues, but my bed loves rock and roll. Yeah, that's a catchy title there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, we'll be watching that in just a moment, folks. But first, uh, I think that's all we need right now. Jim Morris, we thank you so much for being on the show. Um, man, uh, if you thank want, you, man. If you want to, if you want to come back, uh, let me know. I'll have you back on sometime. I appreciate it, man. Maybe me and JL will come back on at the same time. Yeah, that, that'll be great. And, uh, and here it is, um, the video, and it starts right now. Baby, baby. 